Hi there, today's video is all about Application Manager, Absence Application Manager version 10 and the basics. So you can see here that um, I've got the Absence Application Manager console version 10 open. Now before we go anywhere, we need to talk about how does it actually work, the core functionality of the software. And to do that, uh, we're just going to throw up a quick couple of slides to go through the basics. So let's just take a Windows 10 machine. When you build it, uh, in a business environment, you will build what's generally called a gold build. You install the operating system, you'll go through its configuration, license it, etc., and put on your applications that you want to be part of that gold build. Um, and every single file under the NTFS file system on that machine will belong to more than likely the built in administrators, as we can see on the graphic here. Now, no users have touched this machine yet. You're going to seal this machine up, and we know at this stage that every single file belongs to the built in administrator's account or a set of accounts that you have used to install the software. And this might be through HPCA or through any other deployment mechanisms. So that's our gold state. We know it's safe. We know there's no bad applications, no bad software on there. We've switched off all the auto updates. We know it's all perfectly good. And as long as we take that machine and we lock it away and nobody ever uses it, it's never going to go bad. But this is the problem. When we get users that come onto a machine, then they start to do things. They start to download stuff. So what we've got down in the bottom corner is like a little passport. And we know that every single file on that machine belongs to a trusted owner account. The NTFS, the NTFS account that was used to put that file on that machine. So the way that Absence Application Manager works is as follows. The user comes along. Now the user, whatever it is that they're trying to run, be it an application or any form, whatever form of executable, and it's the keyword there is executable, that this guy tries to execute, then it must go down the process queue. And we're not talking about Word documents here because it's not the data in the document that goes down the process queue. It's the actual WinWord.exe that goes down. Now, let's take Notepad for an example. If the user wants to run something like Notepad, then he's going to execute Notepad.exe. And we check the gold bill for Notepad.exe and we check the NTFS file ownership of that file to see who put it there. And you can see it's got the passport. It was part of that gold build. It was supposed to be there. It was part of the machine build. And therefore, AppSense then passes that through its kernel driver, its filter driver. And it says, quite simple, very simple check, who put that file on that machine? Who is the NTFS ownership of that file? And if it belongs to a known set, a very finite set of trusted owners, then it is allowed to go through. It's part of the gold build. It should be there. Let it run. Now, if the user tries to download something and you've given them permission to save it on that gold build, then they will be the owner under NTFS ownership of that file. You've allowed them to store it onto that disk. Therefore, it must have become, they must become the owner of that file. So in this case, again, we do exactly the same check right at the kernel driver before it gets to the CPU, guaranteed to intercept every single form of executable. You don't need to know what the executable is. It's an executable that's going through the kernel driver and we do the very simple check on it again. And we say, who put this file on here? And in this case, it doesn't have this passport. The file is actually belonging to the end user. It is not part of a static list of trusted owners. Therefore, it is blocked, quite simple. So if we go and take a look in the configuration and we go into global settings and look at trusted owners, these are the built-in trusted owners in the AppSense configuration. And we can see here that we have built-in administrators where 99% of the files will belong to. And there are other ones, for example, like the trusted installer. So that is the fundamentals of how application manager works through trusted ownership and file NTFS ownership. And if you want to go and look at file NTFS ownership, we can just go in and we can select a file. So we'll take a look at this file here and we'll go and take a look at properties on it. Uh, we go to security, we go into advanced, and you can see who the owner of the file here is. You can see it's owned by administrators, this particular file. Anything that the user introduces will belong to the user and will not belong to this particular list here. 
and therefore will be blocked by default. Now, the beauty of this is you do not need to know what this file is. You do not need to go pattern matching, updating, quite simply, anything that the user introduces will be stopped. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to log on to our Windows 10 machine. Now, I've already deployed out a configuration and the configuration I've deployed out is AM Basics and this is set to use the latest version and this is pushed out to my Windows 10 machine here. Now I will be doing further videos on AMC, the AppSense Management Center on how to use this but as you can see we are pushed out and we're deployed and the software is deployed AM Basics. So we're going to log on to our Windows 10 machine with this basic config that we've got default and see what happens. So We'll just log on and we'll log on as a user. Okay, and we're logged on here now. So, what well, the first thing we want to do is just run a simple application. For example, let's run Notepad. So, run Notepad and we'll fire Notepad up. Now, this error message I was expecting to see, and we'll come on to this later, but basically, this is AppSense Application Manager telling me that I can't run runDrive.exe. So, we'll leave that message up there for a second. We'll come and take a look at that. Notepad. I can run Notepad. Now, why can I run Notepad? Let's go and have a look. So, if we go on to our C drive, and we go into Windows, and we go down into System32, and we search for Notepad, and we take a look at Notepad and look at the properties, and security, advanced, and the owner is a trusted installer. Now trusted installer, if we go back to our configuration and we take a look in our configuration here and look at the trusted owners, we can see trusted installer is a member of the trusted owners list. Therefore, it is deemed to be part of the actual goal build of the machine and it is allowed to run, quite simple. Now let's go and take a look at our OneDrive problem here. Now I happen to know that this OneDrive is sat down so if we go and take a look into the user user one app data local Microsoft and OneDrive and here it is here this is the application that's causing us the problem so if I try and run it directly we can see we get the error message why well let's, again let's take a look at the properties and uh, let's go into the security advanced and we can see the owner is actually user one User 1 is not in the trusted owners list, therefore it is blocked. And this is one of the peculiarities you're going to get with building from a new environment. You've got to change this configuration because of the reason behind this is because of this is a user generated application as part of Windows 10 and it's sitting underneath the user directory underneath app data local. And therefore, this application has been copied over as the user and then it's trying to execute. Now, we can just leave that because we don't want OneDrive, but it's a bit messy. We might want OneDrive to run. And we'll come back into how we can change this configuration. So, let's do another example as well. Let's try and create something. For example, a new document and we'll call this test.vbs. I'm deliberately going to change this title around and we're going to edit this. And we're just going to say that this is a message box test. So what we're writing here is an executable that's going to run through the C script or W script. So if we try and run this one, well, first off, let's take a look at the properties. The properties of it, security, advanced. And again, we can see the owner is user one because I've created it. You've allowed me to create this onto my desktop, onto my file share under NTFS. I'm the owner of this file. Now this could be malicious code. If I try and run it, again, it's denied. Now, for example, we could uh, try something else totally different. So let's go and take a look into sysinternals. And I could be downloading something off the internet. So sysinternals, I happen to know that this file is safe. But what we're going to do is we're going to download this and save the target as. And we will save this into the temp directory. And I've already got this saved, but we'll just save it over the top. And then we'll go into the temp directory. And look into the temp directory and here it is. Now it's downloaded fine, that's not a problem. If we take a look at the properties and the security of it, advanced, we can see that the owner is user one, but because it's a zip file, I can still get in it. I'm not actually executing anything. But when I try to run and execute something, for example, this one, well, I need to unzip it first. So let's go and extract it all. Yep, I can extract it, no problems at all. 
If I now go and take a look at the properties of one of these, security, advanced, and again, the owner is user one. If I try to execute this now, it is blocked. So again, it's preventing you, no matter how you get executables brought into your system through creating it, downloading it, USB sticks, doesn't matter how it is, but it's always this check. Is it user introduced? Does the user uh, own that file? If they do, they're not part of the system, therefore it is blocked. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to allow OneDrive. OneDrive is causing us a bit of a problem during logon and access check this one here. We want to allow that as well. So the way that we would do this is we go across to our domain control, back onto our uh, uh, configuration, and we're going to open up the config from the management center. Connect up here, and we'll open our AM Basics config, and we're full screens. And let's just get a bit of space here. So the way that this is all set up is basically we have our trusted owners. These are the list of people that are allowed to run. Now with any good software, we can overwrite and create defaults and do overrides in here. And we can do overrides, for example, built-in administrators. Built-in administration, you can see, is set to unrestricted. Now there are four levels of security. Unrestricted, audit only, which will just basically tell you what's going to happen in the form of a log file. Self-authorization is going to warn the user that there's a met, there's a pro potential problem. Do you want to allow this to run? Yes or no. And restricted is full switched on. Now you can see that everybody is set to restricted. Hence the reason we're getting the error messages that are popping up saying you cannot do this. And what we can do with each of these groups is we can override with allowed items and denied items. So it's a form of whitelisting and blacklisting over the top of the basic protection. So let's go to everyone allowed items and right click or add in here OneDrive.exe and we'll allow that one to run and we'll allow it to run even if it's not owned by a trusted owner. In other words, it's a user generated one. We'll allow that to run. Now this would allow anyone to rename anything to OneDrive.exe. We can fully qualify this out if we wanted to into local app data, but for this case, we're not too fussed about it at the moment. And what we'll also do is we'll put in here and we'll allow file and we'll allow the access check and we'll allow that one to run as well. What we're going to do is I'm going to switch everybody and we're going to switch it to self authorization. And we're going to go and save this out, uh, save this config and unlock it. Uh, quick warning here that uh, this is a live config that's going out. And to make things a little bit quicker, I've connected up to my services on my Windows 10 machine and I'm just going to stop and restart the AppSense client communication agent, which will force the download of the new software. And if we go and take a look in here, or we can see our Windows 10 here, and we can see we're upgrading it at the moment. And this should come through in a few seconds. And there we go, we're installed. So let's go back across to our Windows 10 machine and let's see what happens now. So let's, uh, our OneDrive only actually happened during logon, but we can force that. We can go back into users, user one, app data, local app data, Microsoft, OneDrive, and run our OneDrive. And you can see now that the message has changed. This is now prompting me because I've got it set to self authorization. So I'm going to allow for this session. Yes, allow it to run. And let's go back to our access check program again. And we can see now we've got more, more information coming on. So sometimes it will be a cascade effect. And we'll show you how to sort that out later. But let's go back into our temp directory and into our access check and run our access check. And you can see now it is actually running. So this is the basics of how you do overrides for allows and denies on groups of users. So if we go back into our domain controller and take a look at our configuration, we can see we've got the FV1. We've set the, we've, uh, in our, uh, we need to open up our configuration again. For those that don't know, the configuration always closes once you save it. So if we take a look in our allowed items, we can see that our users are now set to self-authorization. We have our default trusted ownership list. But for everybody, we've overridden and allowed OneDrive and access check.
in here. Okay, so what we can do to make this a little bit more secure, let's take the access check. We're going to just delete that one and take that out of the config. And what we're going to do is we're going to use another mechanism here because of if we just use it as access check 64.exe, anyone could rename a file to that. What we're going to do is we're going to use a signature item. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a SHA2 hash on it and it's going to match it byte for byte to make sure it's that particular file. So we're just going to go and browse. And I happen to know, obviously, that it's stored under my temporary directory of my Windows 10 machine. There it is. And we go into the access check 64. And you can see this is the SHA hash it's created. And we add that in. And that's a much more secure way of doing it. Even if one byte of that file changes, then it will not be allowed to run. So that's a much better way of doing it. So from here, you can see that we've been playing around with the built-in administrators group and the everybody group. But we can expend, extend this out a little bit further if we want to. We can actually start to add in users. So we could go user rule, um, we can go and browse, and we can search out and find our user one. And under user one now, you can see we have allowed and denied. So we can fully configure this as much as we want. We can also do this based on devices. So we can add a device rule. Let's give this a rule and just say this is. Uh, Windows 10 desktops and in here we can add in a client device and we can give it our name and OU membership so we'll give it a host name and say this is win 10-01 and this is the computer or if you're on terminal services it could be the connecting device or either and again we can do allows and denies in here as well we can even go down as far and do custom rules that allows us to do multiples so in our custom rules, for example, we can put conditions in for computers, uh, directory membership, registries, etc. And once we've got those, we can do allowed and denies as well. And we can even do scripted rules. So we can add in a scripted rule and we can put a script. And if this returns uh, one or zero, and then we can do allows and denies. So we can see we've got a full range of configuration here that we might want to do. Other features in here, other features in here also include trusted vendors. So we can insert into here and we can create, uh, for example, the certificate belonging to Microsoft. Anything you see with that, allow it to run. We know it's from Microsoft. We know it's safe. Anything from AppSense, signed by AppSense, allow it to run. We know it's safe. User privileges. We can actually elevate to admin rights certain applications. So we could, for example, say that access check um, elevate it up to admin rights and any of its child processes let it continue let it do what it wants to do because we know it's safe and we can also do browser control as well where we can say particular websites yes we know this website is safe if it wants to download an active x control and do some installations let it go ahead and let it do this so what we've got is a full range of control on all of this so we can do what we want and how we want it over the top so what we've got here is our config here that we've set out. Um, we have our OneDrive and we have access check. And we're just going to, again, we're going to save this out and save and unlock it and let it go out. And again, we'll just stop and restart our services. And while that's happening, we are going to log off our user. Um, it's still logged on at the moment. And we're going to log off our user of our Windows 10. And then we're going to log on and see how we go and see how everything's working. So back to our um, AppSense Management Center. And we can see we're fully installed. So we're up and running. And let's log our user back on again now. So hopefully now we're not going to see any OneDrive issues. Um, oh, remember, I've got it set to self-authorization. So I'm going to say, yes, I'm going to allow always. Let that go through. Allow always, yes. So our OneDrive is now going through quite successfully. Our test VBS should still be blocked. Ah, no, it's, remember, it, I've got it set to self-authorization. So it cannot be run without your authorization. So I'm going to block it now. And hopefully then Notepad should still be running, no problems at all, which it is. And if we go back and take a look into our access check, so 
we come along and go into our temp directory, access check. You can see that that has been allowed to work based on the SHA2 hash signature. So all we wanted to do there is give you a very quick 10 to 20 minutes overview of the AppSense Application Manager version 10 console and how it works and how trusted ownership works. We'll follow this up with um, some more in-depth videos on the other characteristics and features of the um, configuration, in particular the endpoint analysis and the rules analyzer. So um, hopefully you found that useful and check back for more videos and don't forget to subscribe.